Hey, Jake. Have you ever seen Garth Marenghi's Dark Place? No. Should I? Well, that was it. The first time in a video I ever turned to one of my friends and said, well. And that changed everything. I'd been feeling like the video essay form had gotten stale. Everyone was doing the same thing, the same voiceover over the same movie clips. I wanted to do something revolutionary. I wanted to shake things up. So Pat called me and Matt in to tell us about this huge new idea he had. Um, the basic gist was that the video would be framed with this scene where he started explaining the topic to us. And you know, we kind of chuckled a bit, but he was really serious about it. We didn't get what the big deal was, but I mean, look, we were just glad to have something to do during one of the video essays. This was something new, a framing device in a video essay. Every other video essay is explaining something to the audience, but this was layered. It was metatextual. This was me explaining something to people who served as surrogates for the audience. Honestly, that's how it goes when we hang out with him anyways. I mean, we stopped inviting him to our friend's giving dinner because he always spent the whole meal explaining to everyone how cool the timeline of the Fast and Furious movies was. I've probably heard that spiel 30 times. So we shot the opening scene. But because it was so out there, so cutting edge, we were afraid if we went further, if we upended the form too much, that we would lose the audience. So after that, we just put on some classic chill hop music and did a normal video essay. Something was pouring from his mouth. He examined his sleeve. Blood? Blood. This is how we're introduced to Garth Marenghi, fictional horror author and creator and star of the fake 1980s TV show Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. If that seems confusing, let me back up. Most works of parody, whether they're a movie like Walk Hard or a song like Weird Al's Amish Paradise, usually work the same way. They use the form and surface of something familiar, like a song or a film genre, but exaggerate and change elements to push it into comedic absurdity. But Garth Marenghi's Dark Place doesn't work that way. This is a show with multiple levels of reality, in which actors play characters playing characters. It operates unlike anything I've ever seen before, and the result is something truly unique. So, what is it? It's a British comedy show created by Matthew Holness and Richard Iowati that aired in 2004. And like a lot of British comedy shows, it's short. As in, it's only six episodes. They only ran six episodes. That's the great thing about British TV. They give you closure. Holness plays Garth Marenghi, a hack horror author who's basically a dollar store Stephen King. Each episode begins with him reading an excerpt from one of his novels, which are very bad in the very best way. The sand turned red. This was because she was bleeding on it. He whisked off her shoes and panties in one movement, wild like an enraged shark. Maggots, 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 maggots. Marenghi explains that in the 1980s, he wrote, directed, and starred in a TV show called Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, which until now has never been aired. The show then transitions into an episode of the show within the show, every so often cutting to new interviews with Marenghi, his producer Dean Lerner, played by Iowati, and actor Todd Rivers, played by Matt Berry. Basically, there are two levels to Dark Place. The first level is the show within the show. It's a mix of supernatural horror and medical drama, about a hospital that holds a gateway to hell and the badass staff who have to fight whatever monstrous threats emerge. And it's terrible. The writing is bad, the acting is worse, and the entire production is shoddy and incompetent. Of course, it's not easy to make something intentionally bad, and the attention to detail is incredible. A cat is visibly thrown into a scene by a production assistant. Close-ups are framed awkwardly with too much headroom. Bit part actors can't do a convincing reaction shot. One character's lines are entirely ADR'd. I'm Dr. Sanchez. You're a woman. Exposition is brutally awkward. Hi, I've come to apply for the doctor's job. I can assure you my credentials are top notch. I've just graduated from Harvard College, Yale. I aced every semester and I got an A. And this is all just in the first minute of the show. Throughout the series, countless production problems appear. There are massive continuity errors. 
one episode has a tacked-on voiceover resolving the plot that plays over static images in a room, since the production had no other footage to use. The detail is so specific that it really feels like a show made by people both bad at their jobs and overly ambitious. And if that were the whole show, it would be an extremely funny pastiche, similar to something like Danger 5. But there's much more to it than that. The second level is the modern context, the introductions by Garth Marenghi, and the interviews throughout the show, in which the primary creative players discuss the production and the show's legacy. It's the second level that reveals the greater narrative of Dark Place. It's not really an intentionally bad 80s horror show. It's the story of an egotistical hack, who believed he was making a radical masterpiece when he was actually making the opposite. The second level recontextualizes everything in the first. The scenes where Dr. Rick Daglas, MD, Marenghi's character, visits random sick children aren't just badly written scenes that contribute nothing to the stories. They're the work of a man desperately boosting his ego by writing scenes in which people tell him that he's a genius and a hero. They work you too hard here. They should pay you a hero's wage. Take the entrance of Dean Lerner's character, Thornton Reed. Listen up, ladies, we've got a situation. A little lass has just cracked a nut, and if she croaks, my ass is grass. On its own, the scene is funny for how bad his acting is, how he powers through the lines with no pauses or emphasis, awkwardly slamming his hand on the desk like someone thinking way too hard about every single movement he's making. But it's the second level that really makes the scene great. It begins with a talking head clip of Dean, proudly explaining how his lack of formal acting training is his greatest asset, setting us up to expect a great performance. And this makes the reveal of his actual acting land so much harder. Here is uh, Dean Lerner playing Thornton Reed, not putting on an act, but putting on the truth. Listen up, ladies, we've got a situation. A little lass has just cracked her nut, and if she croaks... The first level is funny, but it's the second that makes it hilarious. The awkward slow motion is a good visual gag, but Dean explaining the reason for it turns it into a great joke. There's a lot of slow motion. The episodes were running up to eight minutes under. The only way to stretch them out was with slow motion. It's this interplay between the two levels that makes the show so funny, but also provides it with a depth that takes it beyond just a pastiche. Garth is a writer who proudly declares that he doesn't use subtext. I know writers who use subtext, and they're all cowards, okay? But like with most things, he's wrong. Even if he doesn't realize it, every bit of the show he's making is full of subtext, since the subtext is Garth Marenghi himself. Every episode is dominated by his feelings about himself, his fears, his beliefs, his desires, and his prejudices. Listen to me. I am not prejudiced, all right? That is what I'm saying. I am not prejudiced. Garth Marenghi's Dark Place is a character study, a portrait of mediocre men with questionable morals. I personally feel very bad about the cat we killed. I punched um, one of the child actors who was working on set because they um, were rude about Garth writing. And far too much confidence. I'm one of the few people you'll meet who've written more books than they've read. In a given episode, Garth will want to explore a subject like the mistreatment of women. But sure enough, his sexism will show through. Tomorrow I'd tell her she'd lost weight, or that her hair looked nice, whichever seemed more plausible. You can see his lack of respect for the audience's intelligence in the way he defines any easy French word. So much for possibility. French for possibilities. Or points out painfully obvious symbolism. How does one weigh the happiness of these two star-crossed lovers, Romeo and Juliet? The term Mary Sue gets misused a lot. It's meant to refer to a character who is an obvious stand-in for the writer, for the purpose of wish fulfillment. And Rick Daglas is the ultimate Mary Sue. He's a brilliant doctor and an expert in the occult. Women desire him. He's haunted and troubled, and his emotions are very serious. He tells great jokes, every other character loves him, and he's always right. I don't know how, Rick, but you were right. This sort of structure, in which the show or film we're watching is also made by the fictional characters in it, is rare. The closest we usually get is something like Bowfinger or Threat Level Midnight on The Office, where the story is about the characters making a film and we see a portion of it at the end. There are very few examples like Dark Place, in which the show within the show or the film within the film is the entire thing we're watching. 
But recently, that changed with American Vandal, the high school set parody of true crime shows that is meant to be a documentary made by characters within that world. Since the directors of the documentary, Peter Maldonado and Sam Eklund, aren't the main characters, it doesn't take the concept quite as far as Dark Place, but it still utilizes their perspectives for jokes in the writing and editing, like Peter's constant confusion when it comes to Pat Micklewaite's success with girls. Garth Marenghi's Dark Place isn't necessarily the greatest work of parody ever made, but it might be the most unique. It's simultaneously parodying the horror genre, TV medical dramas, but primarily the arrogance and ego of men who believe themselves to be brilliant artists. It might only be six episodes, but I feel like I really got to know and understand who Garth Marenghi is. And that's the great thing about British television. It gives you closure. It's wild looking back on that first framing device. That was a fulcrum point in the landscape of video essays. When people talk about the evolution of the form, there's a time before I said, well, and the time after I said, well. I mean, it worked all right. So after that, we just started doing the same thing at the start of every video essay we made. Sometimes Pat would explain movies to me or Matt or studio executives played by me and Matt or his sister or his parents, but it's just basically the same thing every time. As a video essayist, I don't ask for much. Just my ad revenue, my monthly Patreon earnings, and that I've changed the way you think about cinema. So Dark Place, the show within the show, is really terribly made, with awful, cheap-looking filmmaking. Obviously, Garth Marenghi would never take advice or lessons from anyone, but you should, by signing up for two free months of Skillshare, who are sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 classes taught by experts and covering all sorts of topics related to filmmaking. There are a ton of great classes you can take to really improve your skills. Now, one that would have benefited Garth Marenghi a lot is indie filmmaking Get the Blockbuster Look on a DIY Budget by Nguyen on Nguyen, which is all about how to shoot films that look expensive on a limited budget. So click the link in the description to get two free months of Skillshare with unlimited access to over 20,000 classes for free. And start learning today. Welcome back everyone and thank you so much for watching. I have been a big fan of Dark Place for 10 years now and I'm very excited to finally have an opportunity to talk about it in video form. And by the way, the whole thing is just on YouTube. Just search Dark Place on YouTube and it will come right up. You can watch every episode, so you should really do that if you have not seen it before. And now the usual stuff, check out the Patreon if you want to help us keep making these videos. Follow me on all the social media links if you want to know what's going on. Listen to our podcast, We Heart Heart Net. New episodes drop every Tuesday morning. And come back here in two weeks for a big new video that I think is going to be pretty good. That's all. Bye.